everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm Michael Nebling, and I did this project with a nice group of people at CMU while I was visiting at CMU. Um, I'm going to move to Michigan, so I found a new home, but this is CMU work. And so the, the project that I'm going to present to you is called um, Wear Ride, Car Assisted Writing from Smartwatches. And what you notice just by, 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 by looking at this title, we tried a different approach compared to other people present in the session uh, of making smartwatches more accessible. And we also wanted to be very ambitious. So we wanted to make it possible to actually write a paper while you're out there running in the wild, like this gentleman here, and continue the interaction. And um, I thought this paper could have ended up in two sessions, one more focused on crowdsourcing. Clearly, we have this component in this paper. But this session is more focused on smartwatch interaction. So I think the two questions to keep in mind for this kind of project would be the following. So what we are trying to answer as an overarching, overarching set of questions is how can designers use crowds to augment interactive capabilities of devices? So how can we, in our case, put a crown behind a smartwatch to make it possible to actually write a paper from your watch? And the other question that you're also trying to answer is how can users use crowds to work around interactive impairments, just, as, just me when I was running in the wild? Um, the way we do this is, is not by trying to come up with a new interaction technique or a new, new way of um, providing input to a smartwatch or actually modifying the hardware. Lots of people do this in the community and they do this very successfully, but we tried a different approach. So I'm presenting WearRite here, and WearRite is the system, it's a proof of concept that allows us to actually interact with the crowd out there. The smartwatch becomes our tool to shepherd the crowd, and the crowd is sitting on much more powerful devices out there um, completing writing tasks on our behalf. Um, so where I really introduces this paradigm where we're spanning in some sense a, a cross-device interface ranging from the smartwatch user working on, on one end of the interface to a crowd of people that work in a collaborative editor and actually work on these writing tasks and provide input to the smartwatch user. So I just wanted to point out, if you're more interested in the crowd writing stuff, um, several people here at Kai, um, specifically Jamie Tivan, has a couple of papers with her co-authors um, that looks more into this. We discussed this also in the paper, but the idea of our paper is really to have a proof of concept system. We wanted to try it out, um, whether we can actually realize this idea and make it possible. So what I want to what I want to do now is actually introduce you to the two interfaces that we have. The first one is the, the first interface to where I is clearly the one that the smartwatch user is presented to. So the smartwatch user can dictate writing instructions. They can do this by recording writing instructions that will be recognized using um, it's an Android Wear prototype that we have. So just to Google voice recognition, or they can really record audio and we record audio and we would send this audio to the crowd. Um, the crowd would ideally produce edits uh, in response um, to these instructions. So the smartwatch user will be able to review some of these edits. We were selective about the edits. You don't want to have all the kinds of edits coming in and, and accepting and rejecting. So what we're saying here is the smartwatch user can accept and reject major edits. So we have heuristics in, and that are discussed in more detail on the paper, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about this in a second. Um, importantly, the smartwatch user can, has also a channel to, to interact with the crowd and answer questions that the crowd may have. Um, the crowd, on the other hand, is using an interface that's essentially wrapping around a Google Doc. So we don't reinvent collaborative editing. We use um, Google Doc. But what we do, what you, what you notice here on the, is that we kind of like have another layer on top of the sidebar. And this sidebar is used to really guide crowd workers um, through these tasks. So we decided to give them access to the whole document um, once they're accepting a task. What they then will see is the writing instructions, a specific task that they have to, that they're supposed to work on. Um, they get a timer, and they're recommended to spend no more than five minutes per, per task. They will also see how many other workers are, have accepted this task. So what we haven't done is actually making it possible um, to really coordinate individual crowd workers from your smartwatch and saying how many people are supposed to complete this task and things like this. Future versions might do this, but it also makes it everything more complicated. So what we did instead, rather than locking tasks, we thought we'd give this feedback to crowd workers so they see who else may be working on these tasks. And they can then decide whether they actually also want to um, work on this task. And there's also this Q&A interface where they actually have the way to interact, not through the document directly, th but instead directly through questions um, with the smartwatch user. And the thing to keep in mind here is that a person that may have a, uh, the, a crowd worker that may have a question to the smartwatch user um, may not stick around. So they may have this question, they don't know how to complete this task, but you know, they're crowd workers, so they want to continue working on another task. 
And so what we decided is we make this Q&A interface visible to all crowd workers. So if another person comes in or the same person at a later time, they can see whether the smartwatch user has had the time to actually answer these questions. And so this is like valuable information if tasks um, are not fully clear to crowd workers. So um, what I'm going to show you is a very quick um, video that shows the worker interface. And the main thing to see here is like how flexibly workers can actually choose tasks. So if a worker comes in, they can skip tasks that they don't like or they don't feel comfortable with. They can then accept the tasks. They would make these edits in the Google Doc. And once they think they're done, they can mark the task as completed. What happens at this stage is the smartwatch user gets notified. Um, we also send a screenshot of the edits that were um, generated by the, by the crowd worker. And so the smartwatch user can review these edits on the smartwatch. In addition, the crowd workers can provide feedback, um, both um, regarding our system. So we were also interested in hearing from smartwatch users, uh, sorry, from crowd workers, what they think about this crowd interface. But they can also give feedback to the smartwatch user, um, rating task clarity and other issues that may arise. So what you're really trying to do with this system is to, to keep it as flexible as possible, to work around issues like, for example, extracting relevant parts of your documents. No, we give you full access, and we try to guide you through the complex writing tasks. And at the core of the system is a dynamic task queue. Um, so we have four system-generated, always available writing tasks. These tasks will always be available, and they will help crowd workers um, to iteratively improve the document. So we start from an outline, a bulleted outline, and so one of the tasks would be to find a bullet point in the outline and then edit it so that it becomes a full sentence. Um, these tasks increasingly work at a higher, um, a higher level of, um, if you want, abstraction or complexity because later tasks will actually ask crowd workers to connect sentences to paragraphs to then work at the, at the paragraph level and finally find anything else that needs work. But these are just always available system-generated tasks. With these tasks alone, um, they lead to some results, but the more important thing is that at any time, the smartwatch user can actually ask for specific things to be done. So any time here, a smartwatch user has a specific task, a specific writing task, um, these would be prioritized. So when the next crowd worker comes in or the current crowd worker selects the next task, they would see a user task. We call them user task. And these tasks ideally are more specific and relevant to the current state of the document. Um, so um, we have tested the system with seven smartwatch users and we have seen a variety of tasks um, that, that, that varied in terms of specificity and clarity. Uh, some examples here include write two sentences and why a non-computer scientist would care about this work. So this is like an instruction you might want to give to somebody who's helping you with writing an academic paper. Um, you can also work at a more micromanagement level, merge the first and third sentence. That's something you can just give out there and then a crowd worker would come and would do this for you. If you have this good mental model of the document, this is something you can do from your smartwatch. Another key component behind the system is, is what we call a where write observer. That's a system part that is really observing what's happening in this Google Doc. And in our studies, a lot has been happening in this Google Doc. And as I told you, we're not sending all the edits all the time to smartwatch users. We're selective about the edits. So for example, formatting changes you would never have to review. They would automatically be accepted. Um, what we also do is accept minor edits but um, if, if a crowd worker inserts a large portion of new text or if they decide to delete a portion of text, these would be things that we not, would not automatically accept. Um, in the other cases, things we can automatically accept, the smartwatch user will never see them, will never have to bother with them. So it's like trying to find this trade-off between keeping the smartwatch user in the loop and net, not sending all the kinds of edits and to them at the same time. We don't want to generate a million notifications just because a lot is happening. And so what we did, we have different versions of the system. A first version is what, we, what I call here a pilot, is a, um, a version of the system, an early version, where we actually used our Wear Right system to write a paper with the crowd from a smartwatch about our system. So this is a it's kind of meta, meta, meta. But we're writing a paper using Wear Right about Wear Right. And so this one um, we did with a first set of crowd, um, uh, crowd workers that were coming from Odesk, so, or pop work now. So these were four Odesk workers that we hired for a, about three days, and they helped us produce this um, document, which is essentially a six-pager, um, but they, they get a nice salary, so this document was relatively expensive, so $800. And so this document is now 
um, we tried to publish it as an academic paper, um, struggled a little bit with the, our non-traditional evaluation. So it's now a tech report that you are happy to check out and can find it through our website. And I'm referencing it here. Um, what we now did as part of this paper here at CHI, basically to make it into CHI, we did a more traditional um, evaluation where we asked seven smartwatch users um, that were already smartwatch users, they were very accustomed to using their smartwatches, to use our system and try out how well does it integrate with their daily activities. And so what they were asked to do is write documents, um, essentially research paper introductions or blog articles um, over the course of a week. And so here you see a variety of documents. So we had three, or three smartwatch users, three authors that wrote um, introductions to their CHI papers around that time. Um, other people wrote blog articles, one specifically on presidential candidates, and this was an interesting debate to follow for, and also a lot to do for the smartwatch user, because of course the crowd in this case had a lot of opinions. Um, so what happened over the course of this, these one week deployments with seven smartwatch users is that we observed that there were 205 Mechanical Turk workers um, contributing in total, but many of them returned and, and contributed to multiple of these writing tasks. So what would happen as a smartwatch user, as a single person smartwatch user, you would interact with approximately 29 crowd workers. And there's a lot of activity happening. Clearly these documents are first of all shorter, so don't take this number as a direct comparison to the $810 that I mentioned before, but clearly they're also cheaper because we're now working with Mechanical Turk uh, workers. One of the most interesting things for us to observe and that we discuss uh, quite in length in the paper is that on average, across all these seven writing projects, 96% of the edits were accepted. So the smartwatch users were quite happy with what was produced by the crowd and, and, and tended to heavily tended to accept. So what this project shows um, to us, what can, we learn, what can we learn from this proof of concept, um, is that first of all, and that's what we learned through follow-up interviews with our seven smartwatch users, is yeah, now we have created a system that really has the potential to transform um, smartwatches into, from, from, from primarily content consumption devices through notification into devices that allow you to be productive and generate um, something like a CHI um, research paper intro while you're on the go. And that's the next thing. A system like ours and also one of the primary reasons why we wanted to create it is it allows a lot of flexibility in use. So I'm often out, uh, so I'm not always thinking about writing a CHI paper, but when I am, I often don't have the tools and, and the desktop uh, thing available. So I am, for example, writing on the bus. So what we observed with our um, smartwatch users was that five of the seven participants um, told us in interviews that they really were able to integrate this tool into this, uh, the daily activities. So to, they felt productive using wear ride and spare moments, such as when they were riding a bus at a bus stop, waiting in line at home, at work, at a bar, while playing games with friends, and while driving from Chicago to Pittsburgh. Now, I don't recommend all these kinds of use contexts um, for this system, but it's nice to see that somebody um, on a long drive kind of was still able to get some work done um, while driving from Chicago to Pittsburgh. There was also an issue that we discuss in, in heavily in the paper, and it has more to do with the, idea, with, the, with the fact that you're writing with a crowd of people out there. And so it's not the most relevant to this session, I thought, but I wanted to say it anyway. So clearly from our smartwatch users, we heard about mixed, mixed feelings regarding the writing quality. And what I mean by this is, first of all, there is a clash. There was a clash between um, what the smartwatch users, the authors of the document, really wanted and what the crowd produced. But there was also differences between the edits that, that, that different people in the crowd produced. So, for example, we had a professional copywriter that um, started to complain about some of the changes produced by her co-crowd workers. And um, she said, hey, I know what I'm doing. Stop changing my stuff. And so there was also a little bit of an interesting uh, thing happening there. Um, the last thing that I wanted to mention, and we discuss more things in the paper, is um, overall what we learned from this kind of proof of concept is that, of course, we didn't get everything right. So you, can't, you still can't do everything from your smartwatch. So users, for example, had problems following and, and answering and requesting lots of tasks. So it seemed to be better um, to do it more like sequentially rather than um, launching lots of tasks and then all of these tasks would be um, completed in parallel. And so some of the smartwatch users struggled a little bit with this. And we can also improve the interface so that you get more information what's happening about what's happening in the document. 
But what I show here is like one of the quotes that we had or the themes that we extracted from the interviews is that in general it's a good starting point. So it is both a good starting point as a system, but it's also a good starting point which was produced by the crowd. So what happened was that the, the authors that produced um, three research, Kai research paper introductions actually used the content to some extent. Um, they still had to do another editing pass um, over it, but they used it. And so somebody said, it's something to jump off of, and that's powerful and useful. And so we were quite happy about this. So the last thing I wanted to, to say is that we have decided to um, put up a website out there, wherewrite.com. So if you're interested, you can go there. Um, we will continue developing this, and um, if you're interested, just check it out and get in touch with us. Um, we would like to try it out as a beta. We would like to give it to lots of researchers out there because what I've shown you here is um, a way of using the crowd, but maybe, and then part of the inspiration for this project was maybe you could also think of your research group as a crowd and try it out um, on your uh, students if you want, and uh, let's see what happens, okay? Um, so to close, where to go from here? So what we have in mind is, first of all, also through the feedback that we got from our users, was we still need to improve the multi-device interaction in the sense that we need to make it able, we need to make it possible for people. We forced everything through the watch. That was interesting for our experiment, but that is still limiting. So what we want to work on is improving the multi-device interaction, making it possible to transition writing tasks between different devices. So continuing on the smartphone rather than the smartwatch because a, a slightly larger screen can already give you a lot of benefits. We also want to explore new domains, um, such as in addition to writing, we're really interested in design, and so making it possible, I'm specifically interested in making it possible to design user interfaces directly on the smartwatch uh, using a crowd, so that's an interesting domain uh, to explore. And I think something that we could do in addition to what we've done so far is also helping crowd workers to become better at writing, so to, to help uh, or design depending on the domain and then by actually leveraging or by actually guiding them better through writing tasks and selecting increasingly challenging writing tasks. But there are lots of interesting issues um, when it comes to that. So um, with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you. Yeah, then. Okay, so the question was, what was actually the smartwatch user experience like? And it seems like it's a very fragmented use. Um, and yes, we did observe. So what we did observe is like these seven smartwatch users developed different strategies of, first of all, creating tasks, but then also responding to crowd workers. And um, we were most pleased with those that really integrated into their activities, but some we, we also observed learning curves. And to the extent that two of our smartwatch users did it more like in a batch kind of batch kind of work, so even in, in improving the frag well, increasing the fragmentation because it helped them focus on other tasks. So what they would do is like launch some tasks while they're in the office, then maybe go on a break or something, and then check back later, rather than always being interrupted. So. And what I would say here is like we probably don't have enough data to really give you lots of general answers to your question, but um, what we have achieved is that we created a tool that's very flexible and that it basically can adapt to your workflows and, and it helps you find your way into using this um, system, I guess. So we approached the project iteratively. Um, we were hoping it would work, and um, clearly to make this study, for example, possible over the course of the week, um, the crowd and the smartwatches didn't start from zero. So there was already like a bulleted outline, and that helped. So the initial content production is another issue that we need to address. 
Um, I think the other thing, it also it depends what you mean by whether it works. Um, clearly, our users were very happy by the edits that were produced. If you want the crowd to produce this best paper at CHI 2017, then we would need to look into this a little bit more. Um, okay, thank you.